the story of Red Dead Redemption 2 is an undeniable tragedy of Arthur Morgan, and then Red Dead Redemption 1 is the tragedy of John Marston. However, what if I told you the biggest victim of this entire narrative, the biggest victim of the Vandalin gang, and the greatest tragedy in the Red Dead universe is actually that of a different character's fate? I am, of course, talking about Jack Marston. The tragedy of Jack Marston is perhaps the greatest tragedy of all as far as this game is concerned, and in today's video, we are going to explore it. John Marston Jr, known as Jack, was born in 1895 as the first child of the outlaw John Marston, I mean obviously, his name's John Marston Jr, and former prostitute Abigail Roberts, both of whom were members of Dutch Vanderlyn's gang. Therefore, Jack Marston was born into the gang. The gang did become an extended family to Jack, with its members being referred to as his aunts and uncles, but that doesn't mean this child had a stable family life despite the difficult circumstances. Struggling to connect with his son and doubting that he was even his, along with other concerns about his ability to raise the child, John left the gang in 1896 for around one year, avoiding the responsibility of parenting altogether. Eventually, around 1897, he returned, but that didn't necessarily improve his fathering abilities. John still had his doubts as to whether or not the boy was his, and in the events of Red Dead Redemption 2, voices them on more than one occasion. We also see him acting coldly towards Jack, sometimes by intent, and other times because he simply doesn't know what else to do. And this seeming lack of care from his father definitely had an impact on Jack, but in truth, John did care. He was just so afraid of getting it wrong that he didn't try. This does improve as the game progresses. However, he still struggles to connect with the boy. For the time being though, as much as being part of the gang is no place for a child, Jack is not in the worst of company. The vast majority of the gang members do their best to shelter Jack from the more nefarious side to what they do. They interact with him and enable his creativity and also his curiosity. Hosea teaches him to read, which he later develops a keen interest for. Arthur also takes him fishing as a couple of examples of how the Vanderlind gang tries to accommodate a child. Unfortunately though, considering this is a criminal gang, even when it may seem stable, this is indeed a very volatile environment. And the cracks begin to show, members of the gang begin to die, and also they can't hide the truth about what they do from him forever. He overhears conversations had around camp, and while he can't understand them immediately, an older him can reflect on them and know exactly what's going on. And also, due to being a vulnerable child in the middle of a sticky situation, Jack on at least a couple of occasions finds himself way closer to the action than he should be. But for the time being, this doesn't appear to have much of an effect. Jack is an intelligent, creative kid. He's otherwise quite normal and innocent, and is quite comfortable around people. But I think the landmark event in the main story of Red Dead Redemption 2 for the time being that we need to focus on is the demise of the gang itself. The gang being disbanded, and Jack's life being turned completely upside down at a young age. Arguably, this is the equivalent of Jack losing his entire family save for his parents meaning the broader support network he had is no longer there, and what they provided for him now needs to be provided by Abigail Roberts and John Marston. We rejoin the Marston family in 1907, eight years after the main events of Red Dead Redemption 2. With John still technically a wanted man, he is on the run, and therefore Trouble has the knack for following him just as much as he has the knack of following Trouble. From Go, we see a difference in how Jack presents himself. First and foremost, he's no longer a four year old, I feel like that's a big point. He's also more introverted, more interested in reading his books than doing more or less anything else. John still struggles to connect with him, and due to the fact that they're always moving about, there is no normalcy in his life, so Jack withdraws to his books. That's his baseline, that's his consistency. Eventually, they manage to settle down on a ranch of their own at Beecher's Hope. I'm skipping over a lot of context, but I don't think it's too relevant. And finally, the Marston family has some normality to cling to. Maybe life at Beecher's Hope made Jack a little happier, but there was still this disconnect between John Marston and his son. Anyway, John risks everything he built going after Micah Bell. 
Abigail tries to warn him, but John feels like he has to go and kill Micah. Otherwise, this dream life that he's managed to accomplish is no more real than one of Jack's dragons from his books. While this line is John stressed about a situation, it does speak to a more flippant and less understanding attitude towards Jack's creativity and imagination. While that's worth mentioning, what comes next is far more significant. In hunting down and killing Micah Bell, John Marston leaves a trail for Edgar Ross and the newly founded Bureau of Investigation to track him down, which they do, therefore undoing Arthur Morgan's sacrifice as the authorities now know the location of John Marston and his family. Once again, while they don't realise it right away, the Marston family's life is once again threatened by John's criminal past, and it would seem as if a normal, stable, functional family dynamic for Jack Marston is impossible. Not to downplay the best efforts of his mother and father, who don't quite understand him. My point is, despite any attempt to give Jack a better, more stable and less criminal life than that which John, Abigail, Arthur Morgan, Uncle and the rest of the Vandalin gang lived, their actions and past involvement with the gang keep catching up with John Marston and his family, which includes Jack. At this point, as a result of his more sheltered upbringing and in a life where that just simply does not suit, Jack was less courageous than, say, John was, and often felt inferior to his father. However, John and Abigail did not want Jack to follow in John's gunslinger footsteps, instead eventually wanting him to take over the ranch. Jack himself wanted to become a writer or a scholar, his parents partly approved, provided he could look after the ranch as well. This lifestyle would have been easier to obtain had John taken Arthur's advice and run and not looked back instead of going after Micah Bell in 1907. This is the event that seals the fate of the Marston family, though it would take a few more years for this to be realised. Come 1911, politician and candidate for Governor of West Elizabeth, Nate Johns, promised to clean up the rampant crime in the region as part of his election campaign. The Bureau, with Nate John's support, decides that this means hunting down the last known remnants of the Vandalin gang. Taking Jack and Abigail into custody, the Bureau leverages John into hunting down Bill Williamson, Javier Esquela, and later Dutch Vandalin. As cruel and unethical as this tactic is, it works, and John hunts down his former friends under the false promise that afterwards he would get to return to his family and live out his life as a free man. At first, this promise is honoured, and John Marston returns to his family. Jack, now 16 years old, understands exactly what his father was, though John didn't really try to make a secret of it. Now desperate to prove himself to his father, Jack tries to teach himself survival skills his own way, claiming that his father was too inconsistent in his life to be reliable. And while we see John teaching Jack how to hunt and skin and trade furs down at Manzanita Post, Jack is still eager to go beyond and finally win his father's approval. This leads him to leaving on his own, heading up into the Tall Trees region to hunt a grizzly bear, which he was far from ready for facing. An encounter that if John had not intervened, it would have cost Jack his life. Of course, like any parent would in that situation, John chastises Jack for his disobedience and recklessness, and Jack argues with John over his sparse involvement in his life. Above all else, Jack fears abandonment, and in order to control this, he believes he can only really rely on himself. Soon after this, the Bureau, accompanied by the United States Army and even some US Marshals, launched an assault on Beecher's Hope in an attempt to tie up loose ends and kill John and maybe even his family if they can get away with it. John sacrifices himself to allow his family to escape, knowing that if they kill him, they'll have no reason to come back. As a result, Edgar Ross gets what he wants, killing off the last remnants of the Vandalin gang. Jack and Abigail return later to find John's lifeless body. And so now Jack's lost his father, all because he couldn't get far enough away from his outlaw past. Come 1914, Abigail Marston passes away as well, and Jack Marston, now 19 years of age, sets out to hunt down Edgar Ross and get his revenge. Excuse me, you Edgar Ross? Do I know you? Forgive me for starling you, sir. I have a message for you. My name is Jack Marston. You knew my father. 
I see. I remember your father. I've come for you, Ross. <laughs> you, boy, have sure shit found me. You killed my father. Your father killed himself with the life he lived. You killed him. I saw you. You keep saying that. You sent him to do your dirty work. Then you shot him like a dog. And I'll shoot you like one too, you little piece of trash. Now get out of here before I kill you as well. I ain't going nowhere, old man. In the final moments of the story, Jack kills Edgar Ross and takes his revenge, becoming an outlaw, the very thing his parents tried to stop him from being. The sacrifice of Arthur Morgan and John Marston mean nothing now, as their lives have become his life, and it's easy enough to get in, but as we've seen over the course of the story, it's near enough impossible to get back out again. In gameplay, we can see Jack Marston's personality has darkened. In high honor situations, he's depressive, and will acknowledge that he has nothing to live for and in low on the situations he's outright sadistic and belligerent, full of self-loathing. Besides, in combat situations he will often invoke his family name, as if the John Marston name means something, but Jack means nothing, even referring to himself as John Marston Jr. While his honour is player decided, no matter what you do, Jack Marston clearly has a death wish. He is no longer the innocent child that we saw in 1899, and he now carries on the legacy of Arthur Morgan, John Marston, and the rest of the Vanderlind gang. He may have survived, but he never escaped. What happened to Jack canonically after killing Edgar Ross is unknown, and maybe he did eventually break the cycle of violence and move on with his life, but the main tragedy of the Red Dead Redemption games is, even if this did happen, it couldn't happen soon enough for Jack Marston, who now has to live out the rest of his life carrying over the sins of his father and the rest of the Vanderlind gang. And as we saw, John getting revenge on Micah for Arthur's death brought no good to his life, so there's no reason to believe why Jack killing Edgar Ross and getting revenge for his father's death would mean the end of the cycle of violence. And even if it did, Jack Marston is far from unscathed. And that concludes today's video, my friends. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to go ahead, leave a like, subscribe, share the channel with your friends and all that wonderful stuff. That would be super fantastic. And with any luck, I'll be seeing you all very soon with another video at some point. But until next time, please do take care and goodbye.